Hello, it's Miss Beatty here and today we are continuing to focus on our topic of measure and we are still looking at uh, capacity and volume, which is a follow on from yesterday's video, but we are focusing on millilitres and litres today. So ML for short for millilitres and L short for litres. And we are learning to read scales using millilitres and litres and looking at how we estimate uh, for example, liquids. And you can see on this little poster, we've got some keywords like capacity, measuring jug, litre, container, quarter full, half full. So throughout this video, you might hear me using words like that because it links in with our topic of measure and capacity and volume. Now, what is a milliliter? ML for short, a mil. A milliliter is a unit of volume. So on our metric system, it's a unit of volume and you can see here's a little diagram it's like a beaker which is filled with water or liquid so it's just about how much space fills uh, an object or an amount or how much liquid fills an, a 3d object basically a milliliter is a very small amount of liquid so we use it to measure small capacities okay small amounts of things here is a milliliter of milk in a teaspoon. Okay, you can see it's a tiny, tiny amount of liquid. Okay, and it doesn't even take up the whole teaspoon. So it's a tiny amount, one milliliter, but only fills the bottom of the teaspoon. So that's what that one mil, that's what one mil looks like. Now, when we collect 20 drops of water, we have about one milliliter. So that's when, you know, when it's raining outside, about 20 drops is probably equivalent to one milliliter that's an estimate and a teaspoon can hold about five milliliters one teaspoon of liquid here is about five milliliters and you can see it's much fuller than the last teaspoon okay so th that's how small milliliters are but you can also go all the way up to a thousand milliliters so for example you can have 100 milliliters you could have 200 milliliters and um, water bottles often come in 500 milliliters a lot of you have got these reusable uh, water bottles or chili bottles that keep water nice and cold and they are normally in 500 mils. Okay, you can see here a multi-pack of fizzy juice. Each can is worth 330 milliliters. So these are really good real life examples. Here's a beaker that would be used in science lessons um, uh, and a sort of like a milk or a little water bottle for very young children or toddlers. The milk cartons that we drink at break or lunchtime, fairy liquid and soap when we're doing the dishes. You can see these are all measured in milliliters. And once we reach 1000 milliliters, that is when our measurements turn into liters. One, eh, sorry, 1000 milliliters is equivalent to one liter. Okay, so those are some really good real life examples. Now, one mil is obviously equal to one milliliter. And like I said, 100 mils is equal to 100 milliliters. And 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. That's really important to know. And you can see on this measuring jug, there's nothing in it just now. So you would say there are zero mils. There's nothing in this measuring jug. But obviously, if you filled it with water, if you filled it to here, you would have 100 mils of water, 200 mils of water. 300 mils of water and so on half a liter and if you continued to fill this measuring jug up with water all the way up to a liter that is the maximum capacity of this jug so i hope that makes sense once you've got one liter if you wanted to add any more liquid you'd have to have a bigger container that started to measure the liquid in liters and i'll explain that in a little minute so we know a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. So here's one liter. I'll mark it out on our measuring jug. So when we are asked what is half a liter, and it's already marked out on this measuring jug, a lot of measuring jugs or measuring equipment will, rather than saying 500 mils, they will say half a liter. Now, the reason it's 500 mils is because a half of a thousand is 500. 500 add 500 is equal to one thousand so we should remember that hopefully from our fractions topic so half a litre is the same as 500 mils and we know that's definitely correct as well because between 400 and 600 it has to be 500 that comes next 400 500 600 but what about a quarter of a litre 
Well, we know that a quarter of a hundred, if we look, think back to our fractions and our percentages topic, a quarter of a hundred is 25. So to figure out what a quarter of a litre is, you're just asking yourself, what is a quarter of a thousand? How many fours go into a thousand? And the answer is 250. Now, 250 obviously has to be in between 200 and 300, okay? Because 250 take away, to, uh, take away 50 would get you back down to 200. And 250 add 50 mils would take you up to 300 mils. So that is where a quarter of a litre would be on a measuring jug. And we can see that if you were to fill the liquid from left to right here, it would look like a quarter because it's much smaller than a half. So I hope that makes sense. Try and remember that half a litre is 500 millilitres and a quarter of a litre is 250 millilitres. And there are always a thousand millilitres in one litre. So what's a litre then? Well, a litre is a larger amount of volume or capacity than a millilitre. It's much bigger than a millilitre. And like I've said before, we know that there's a thousand millilitres in one litre. And a carton of orange juice or any kind of juice will typically be measured in litres. One litre, you can see here on the front of the packaging. Again, a measuring jug, if you measured liquid right up to the top, it would be equal to one litre. And you can also get plastic um, water bottles that are also, they also come in litres. Same with reusable um, water bottles, which are much better for the environment. So I would recommend buying those instead of ones like this. But um, uh, you can get one litre chilli bottles. The one I have um, that you might have seen me drinking from in class is one litre. Okay. Now, what happens if you are then asked to figure out how much liquid is in a measuring jug or in a beaker like these ones? And sometimes the liquid is not always going to reach a point on our scale that is obvious. So if the water is here, you would know that it's worth 25 mils. But if the water is, for example, here in this example or here, it becomes a little bit trickier. And there are lots of different ways you can work that out. In the last video I've shown you, you can use that trial and error method where you just use your times tables to figure out which each increment or little line is worth. So, for example, if this jug was empty, it would be zero millilitres. But if I went up in maybe tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, well, I know it's not worth each little increment is not worth 10 millilitres. Um, I could work out maybe it's in fives. So zero. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So it's each little increment is worth five mils. And I can double check that because if I ask myself how many increments are there between zero and 25, I know that there are one, two, three, four. There's five increments. So if I do 25 divided by five or how many fives go into 25, my answer is going to be five millilitres. So I know that each little line is equal to five millilitres. So if I double check the capacity in this jug, five, 10, 15, 20, I know that there are 20 millilitres of water in this jug. Uh, what about this one here? So using that same method, I'm going to go up in fives. Zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 mils. There are 40 mils in this measuring jug. And that's definitely correct. Because if I, if again, if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, eight times five is 40 milliliters. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. Uh, what about this one here? So we're still working in uh, millilitres. How many increments are there between zero and 100 mils? So let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten increments. So to work out which each little line or increment is worth, I have to do 100 divided by 10. Or how many tens go into 100? Again, I can just knock one zero off, which will give me my answer. Or if I know what 10 times 10 is, I'll get my answer as well. So I know that 10 goes into 100 10 times. So each little increment is worth 10 millilitres. So let's figure out how much water is in this beaker. We've got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 
70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. So in this beaker, there are 120 milliliters. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Again, this has got a slightly different scale. As we can see, it's not quite the same as this one. But if we do that method where we count how many increments there are between 0 and 100, we will get our answer. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 5 increments. So I need to do 100 divided by 5, or how many 5s go into 100? I know that 5 times 10 is 50. So if I double that, if I double 10, 5 times 20, I know must be 100. So 5 goes into 100 20 times, OK? So I know that each increment must be worth 20 milliliters. And I'm going to double check that now. 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So it's definitely going up in 20s. 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. 200, 220, 240, 260. So I know that this beaker is 260 millilitres full. So I hope that makes sense. Those are examples of uh, measuring jugs or me measuring cylinders that are in millilitres. But what happens if you are asked to figure out the amount of liquid in litres? Because some scales will go past millilitres and will ask you to figure out in the answer in litres. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Remember, if there's a thousand millilitres in one litre, anything below one litre is going to be measured in millilitres. OK, so if I give you a clue, this is worth 800 mils. OK, here. So if the water was filled to this level, it would be worth 800 mils. This one would be 900 mils because it's obviously below one litre. If I want to work out the increments or how much each of these are worth, I just need to count. So to get from one litre to two litre, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oops, nine, ten. OK, there are ten increments. OK, so that must mean that each of these little lines are worth a hundred mils. It's going up in hundreds because remember how many ten, sorry, how many mils go into a thousand. OK, so each of these are worth 100 millilitres. So this is one litre, one litre, 100 millilitres, one litre, 200 millilitres, one litre, 300 millilitres. Or you could do it as 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. So we'll write in 1.5 here. 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2 litres but our level of water is only reaching here okay which is equivalent to 1.8 and 1.8 okay is the same as saying one litre okay and 800 millilitres because each of these little lines are worth millilitres remember okay here is one litre 1 litre 100, 1 litre 200, 1 litre 300, 1 litre 400, 1 litre 500, which is the same as saying 1.5 litres, 1 litre 600, 1 litre 700, 1 1.8, which is 1 litre 800 millilitres, 1 litre 900 millilitres, then it goes straight to 2 litres and so on, 2.1, 2.2. That's how the scales work, okay, litres and millilitres, that's how you would write your answer. OK, again, with this one, how many increments, OK, between zero and one litre? And we know that one litre is equal to a thousand millilitres, OK? A thousand millilitres. OK, so this must be a very large uh, measuring cylinder. So how, let's work out how many uh, increments there are. There are one, two, three, four, there are five, OK? How many fives go into a thousand? Now, if you can't use your head to do that, again, you can just write it out, okay? Like a bus stop method of division. Or you can use a calculator. I mean, it's better to obviously use our heads to work our um, to work these out, but it's up to you. So how many fives go into a thousand? Well, we know five doesn't go into one, so we would put zero here. Carry over our one to make 10, because that's the remainder. How many fives go into 10? Well, we know that five times two is 10, so the answer is two. 
and 5 doesn't go into 0, so we just put the zeros above like that. So that must mean that each increment is worth 200 millilitres. So I need to work out where our water has been measured up to. And I know that this measurement here, this little increment, is worth 200 mils. OK, 200 mils. So if that's 200 mils, this must be 400 mils. OK, this must be 600 mils. This must be 800 mils. So this is then a litre. So now we've got one liter 200 or 1.2, okay? So 1.2 we know is the same as one liter. So you'd write it as one L and 200 mils. You don't even need to put the little plus sign. You could just do one liter 200 mils, okay? I hope that makes sense. One liter 200 mils, 1.2. You could just write it as 1.2 liter like that. OK, so that's obviously one litre, one litre 200. This would be one litre 400, one litre 600. And if you filled it right to the very top, we would have one litre, OK, and 600 mil, eh, sorry, 800 mils. OK, so that is how you work out eh, a measurement if you're talking about litres and millilitres, especially if you've got any sort of liquid that goes above a thousand mils that is when we are then working with liters so i hope this video makes sense i hope it helps you to complete the activity sheet remember just try your best ask for help if you need it and show us your work on teams okay